Coming up, the Quad Gym starts women's only hours to encourage healthy female lifestyles. Not to be outdone, dining services have started no fat chick Fridays. And last week marks sex week at Yale. This week will be morning after pill week. Next week is regret week. Week after that, I think it's getting a bit late, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have that abortion week. Classes can wait. You're on Harvard time. Welcome to Unharvard Time. I'm Derek Flansreich, and this is our new anchor, Alex Zimler. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Derek, I'm a British, American, and French citizen all at the same time, meaning I have more internal drama than Iraq, which, incidentally, only one-third of me now supports. On to the big news in the square. Chipotle Mexican Grill is opening its doors for business this week, meaning even more profits for the avocado farm in my dorm room. I'm a British, American, and French citizen. With a report on the upcoming taco tussle, here's Nelson Greaves in our continuing coverage of Burrito Wars. It's war, Burrito War. Chipotle's opening in the square threatens to tip the balance of burrito power forever. Who will prove that they are the mightiest burrito? My hunch was Chipotle, but just to be sure, I decided to conduct the scientific test. Of war. Hi, we're here with Jackie Shea, who's going to help us prove once and for all which is the mightiest burrito in the square. Give me the Bologna. Oh. Give me the Felipe. Oh. Give me the Canova. Oh. Okay. Give me the Chipotle. Oh. With flavors like these, we don't stand a chance. Chipotle was clearly the mightiest burrito. But just to be sure, I sought out the advice of an old burrito sage, Christopher Walken. Uh, Nelson Greaves from On Harvard Time. Chris, what would you say to young people like myself whose goal it is to become men of the year? Eat Chipotle burritos every day. <laughs> I mean, really, I just love Chipotle burritos. I would eat them all the time. They're just so delicious. Mm-mm. There you have it. For On Harvard Time, I'm Nelson Greaves. Oh, I love burrito. Thanks, Nelson. Just as MSNBC hired Pat Buchanan, we have our own unbalanced right-wing failed presidential candidate on our staff. To talk about Fidel Castro's resignation as Cuban president, here's OHT's resident Joseph McCarthy, Francis Martel. I'm really pissed that OHT is collaborating with Chipotle. You will be hearing about this from me. Earlier this month, the Graduate School for Arts and Sciences experienced a security breach when a hacker made its server accessible to the Pirate Bay, a popular torrenting website. The hacker left a letter stating, We want demonstration the insecurity of Harvard server. Upon resecuring their network, the GSAS released the following rebuttal. We want you not be so fucking illiterate. While the graduate school has claimed no serious damage was done, the presence of Harvard doctoral theses on Pirate Bay has had strange effects on some students. Wait, this isn't porn! But it is written in a masturbatory tone. <laughs> the Harvard campus has held several blood drives recently. Here to comment is correspondent Alexandra Petri. Hi, Derek. I love donating blood, but there are drawbacks. Other charities you can donate to, no questions asked. You know, food drives, presidential campaigns, sperm banks. No one bothers to find out where your gifts have been. Gifts? But the Red Cross does care about where your donations come from. And so you have to commit to a clean lifestyle. That's why I carry around this clipboard filled with questions from the Red Cross, which I incorporate into all my first dates. Hey there, let's play a fun getting to know you game. Have you ever received money, drugs, or other payment in exchange for sex? You don't look like the sort of person who would have anemia. How's your platelet count? It's not you. It's your hepatitis. There's nothing wrong with your butt. You're just not that attractive. Sometimes it's hard to say no, but you have to decide. Would you rather donate blood or have a potentially mind-blowing encounter with a man who's had sex with another man, even once, since 1980. Alexandra Petri, everybody. And now for our one Harry Potter joke for the week, here's another edition of Rock and Rolling. 
Rowling hasn't yet revealed what the speech will say, but she has said that at least one well-known Harvard student will die during it. Most people believe it will be former UC President Ryan Peterson or his pet owl. Last week, campus Muslim groups put on a series of events to educate the Harvard populace about their faith. Here with a report is senior ecumenical correspondent J.P. Stills. Thank you, Alex. It was an eye-opening Islam Awareness Week. Or should I say, Islam Bewareness Week. No, no, you definitely shouldn't. Really, Alex? The more I learn about this religion, the more I realize how incompatible it is with my values. I mean, they taped their calendar of events to my door as though I have no Western-style property rights. My door, Alex. I think a lot of organizations... And you know what else? Muslims believe in only one God. No, JP. <laughs> Wait, what? How many gods do you expect them to believe in? My two gods, Barack Obama and running mate to be determined. Um, I don't think you can force your beliefs on other people, however valid you feel them to be. <laughs> That's my point. Look at this nice picture of Barack helping an old man cross the street. If the Muslims would take all that effort to Photoshop traditional Somalian garb on him, don't you think that they would stop at nothing to promote their cultural agenda? And what agenda is that? <laughs> if I knew something about it, then I would just be propagating their culture, wouldn't I? Beware, Alex. Thanks, JP. And thanks to all of you for watching. Now, here's a moment that will happen only at Harvard, because Gavin DeGraw can't get a gig anywhere else. And if you want to see me naked, Gossip Geek, check out our new On Harvard Time blog at onharvardtime.blogspot.com. And, of course, you're welcome.